Hey everybody, Madrebred here. So I was just emailing with a developer of uh, of Adam RPG on Steam, and we've been talking for a few days about like classic, um, mostly like kind of Eurojank Eastern RPGs and games and everything. And he was talking about the Golden Age slash the Dark Age of like Russian gaming, Slavic gaming, and everything. And those are the kinds of games that like I have a real fascination with. I own a lot of weird old ones, like really weird old stuff that got published by Strategy First way back in the day and like Kanung Legends of the North and like some really weird ones like it at least Kanung is on goodoldgames.com you can still purchase that for as difficult as it can be but I'm holding in my hands because I, I was just um <laughs> I was just talking I, I last email I sent to him I was saying I was talking about um Hammer and Sickle it's a uh, it's a game made by I don't know if any of these companies are still Nival Interactive. I don't know if any of the companies involved with this are still around today. Uh, I doubt it. Sometimes when I bring up Silent Storm, people are like, "Oh, I know of that game." And if they're Russian, they might say that they've played that game. But I own. You can see there's like a box in the background, right? Uh, that's because I was digging through my old games. So let me see if I can get this looking good. I actually own Hammer and Sickle. Now, this is what it look li looked like when I bought it. I bought it, like, like, when it came out. I think like a year after it came out. This was not a garage sale or anything. This is what the jewel case actually looks like. It, it looks bootleg. Either than that the actual graphic on the front of the CDs look really good. But you can see I have the full set and everything. Like it's a it's a three disc one, so I can flip this over. So you can see, yeah, it's it's three disc jewel case uh, for the game. I probably am one of the only people in Canada who own this, and this wasn't like me getting it off eBay years later. It's I. If anyone remembers Mo Fun Zone, the um, the old Flash game site that probably doesn't exist anymore, it had a section where you could download game demos, and I was looking through it one day, and I was looking through the RPG strategy section, and they had one for Hammer and Sickle, and that demo was really good. So I ended up getting the game uh, when it was out, probably for like a year or something, when I was not even a teenager, I don't think. Uh, so I've had this for a long time. The, the case is kind of scratched up a little bit, but the discs work. Now this game is awesome. It is janky, it is buggy, uh, but it's a really, really cool plot. It's a cool setting. It's like a Cold War espionage game where you are a Russian uh, ex-commando who has been sent into West Germany. And it's a really, really fascinating game. I'd love to stream this for you sometimes, I think. I think I shouldn't have too many issues streaming it now that I've got it running properly. Now, to get this game running is such a pain. So first of all, it's got this terrible DRM on it that I, I think it's, from what I looked into it once, it's this really old, really bad Russian DRM. So this was made for Windows XP, and if you try to run the game on anything from Windows 7 or newer, just trying to launch it, the DRM will freak the fuck out, crash your computer, and it will do like a safety reboot when your computer comes back on and delete whatever you just installed, which is the game, where it like rolls back to your last uh, system restore for safety. That is how much the DRM panics the computer, because the DRM is not meant for modern computers at all. It's really poorly programmed. This is why people complain about DRM making PC games unplayable, by the way is Windows 7 has been out for a long time. So this, this game has been unplayable off disk for a long time. Like these discs install, but the game doesn't actually run. The DRM will crash it. Another thing is that the game does not run if you have more than four gigabytes of RAM, which of course everyone does now, because it thinks you have less than one gigabyte. I don't know why. Uh, I remember back in the day to get this working when it first came, when I first upgraded to Windows 7, I had to learn how to use a hex editor to basically crack the EXE. Nowadays, you can just go in game copy world and get your own crack for the EXE if you own the game already. Uh, which, by the way, at least here in Canada, you're allowed to crack games you already own. So that that is not admitting to a crime. I think it's pretty clear that I own the game. Uh, so... Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, it, this is completely unrelated to, like, 
anything on this channel, other than that I want to stream this one day, because it is genuinely a really good game. Really unfair, but also really fun. Uh, and I could probably stream it. I'm pretty sure I've actually booted this a little bit on Windows 10, and it does run okay. I don't know if OBS will pick it up for the game capture, but worst case scenario, all I have to do is um, plug my capture card into my own graphics card, simulate it as being a monitor, um, have that monitor copy, that fake simulation of a monitor copy to my main monitor, and then tell OBS to display capture the not existent copied monitor. It sounds complicated, but it lets you capture basically anything uh, without having to have two computers, which is nice. Uh, that's how I had to capture Kanung Legend of the North, by the way, because Kanung and Kanung 2 do not capture from any software I have ever seen. It is unbelievable. Like, I, w I went, I tried to use Fraps. I was so desperate to record that game originally, and that didn't work. That's when I had to develop that whole idea of simulating a monitor that is actually my capture card and then have that mirror my main monitor and then display capture the monitor that doesn't exist that is mirroring my main monitor it is so wacky but you can capture anything that shows up in your monitor by doing that um it's basically a complicated version of just having two computers and one has a capture card and it plugs into the other one's graphics card it's just a super complicated version of doing that but with one computer but obviously you need to have built a capture card into your computer. So yeah, I just wanted to show off that I have that, and uh, maybe you want to Google around for this game a little bit. There's not much info about it online. There's like some really old game FAQs walkthroughs on it that are like, they, they, they have a lot of things missing from them, but still, uh, I bet you there's a real fan community for maybe not this game, but I know that there is for the Silent Storm games at least. But man, I don't know what the licensing rates are with this game, but if this could ever show up on good old games or Steam or something one day, uh, if somehow this winds up on any of those platforms, uh, buy Hammer and Sickle. This is a really fun old school strategy game that is just, uh, it, it's one of those, it's, it's the pure definition of Eurojank. It's programmed like shit, it runs like shit, but it is so ambitious and it's so unique. You'll never find anything like it. And it's, it's setting and it's theme are so good. And you can tell that the people who worked on it really, really cared. We're like, you know, it's limited. It doesn't look beautiful even for the time it came out, but the voice acting is really good. And the dialogue is genuinely really good where you can tell that like the people who worked on this project were really passionate about it. And that tends to make the games that I love the most. Like you guys might know my favorite game is Deadly Premonition. I did a 100% playthrough of it on my channel. And that game <laughs> runs like shit. You need like a hundred fan mods to fix the game so that it runs properly. And it like dares you to not play it by front loading the game with the worst part. But it's awesome. It's just, it's an awesome game that the developers were obviously incredibly passionate about. And I think that's how you make the best games is, uh, it, the engine doesn't need to be amazing. The programming doesn't necessarily need to be amazing. Gen 1 of Pokemon is a glitchy fucking mess, but we all still love it. Uh, Fallout 1 is a glitchy mess, but we all still love it. Uh, just as long as it's a game made with enough passion and with a good enough idea, then it'll turn out being worth it. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.